Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, we're talking about uh, TV upscaling technology, how it's used almost on a daily basis without you realizing it, why it's important, um, and then we'll talk about AI upscaling, how it's overhyped, and how there are some successes to it as well. And for regular TV upscaling and for AI upscaling, I'm also going to show you what that means. Uh, so I'm not only going to explain it, but show it to you so you actually can grasp the idea very easily. Um, so. TV upscaling, let's start with that first. Uh, the concept is really simple. It allows you to basically watch low resolution content into a high resolution uh, display. It could be a computer monitor, TV, tablet, cell phone, whatever it be. So for example, if you have a 1080p video, how does it play in 4K? Well, so people just think you just play and that's it. Like there's, there's nothing really to it. Um, but this is where upscaling comes into play. So continuing on with our example of 1080p video, and a 4K uh, display. Let's take, for example, you watch a 1080p video on a 1080p 90 inch TV. Works great, right? 1080p video on a 1080p TV, 90 inch, fantastic. Without TV upscaling technology, despite this playing great on a 1080p 90 inch display, if you were to put this on a even a, a, a 10 inch 4K display, it wouldn't fill in the entire screen because it's not the screen size that matters, whether it be a computer monitor, uh, TV, tablet, cell phone, so on and so forth. It's not the screen size that matters, it's the, the pixels and the resolutions. So 1080p is actually 1920 pixels across by 1080 pixels down. That's where you get the, the, the name 1080p because there's 1080 pixels going down, right, on the side. 4K is actually 2160p. A lot of people don't realize it. They think, they think oh, 4K is 4000p. That's incorrect. You can Google it if you don't believe me. Uh, it's actually 2160. Well, actually, it would go here. 2160p, right? Um, so this is where TV upscaling technology comes into play. What it'll basically do is try to take this resolution and put it in this display. So what basically happens here, if you try to take 1080p into 4K display, Without TV upscaling technology, the reason it wouldn't fit the entire screen is because 4K has a few million pixels more than a 1080p video would. That's the key thing. So how does TV upscaling technology work? This is where the magic happens. And it happens so quickly and so flawlessly, people honestly, even myself, take it for granted. It's actually incredible how much uh, science has gone into this. So basically, you take the 1080p video and put it into a 4K display. It stretches the resolution of the 1080p video. The, the 1080p video is going to be stretched to fit all these uh, millions of extra pixels. But how does that work, right? It doesn't make sense because you have all these missing gaps. Like this screen would look kind of patchy. There will be a lot of black holes kind of. Like where are all those pixels? Well, what TV is trying to do is if you have pixels 1 and 2, okay? They're really tiny, so I'll just kind of draw it. So you have pixels 1 and 2 here. Right, because it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, all the way for you know a few thousand. What happens is between pixels one and two, 1080p can't fill it in, right? Because it's not enough pixels here. There's there's less here. There's four times as less pixels in 1080p than there is compared to a 4K display. So what happens is be between pixels one and two, the TV is like, hey, there's, there's missing pixels here. What am I gonna do? Well, I'm going to artificially make pixel number 1.5. It doesn't actually say that. I mean, that's not what the TV is thinking, but that's what it's doing. This is a very simplified manner to explain it. It's going to be like, hey, I'm, I'm missing a pixel in between 1 and 2. I'm going to make pixel 1.5. Well, what happens with pixel 3? Well, pixel 3 is there, but it's saying, hey, between pixel 2 uh, and pixel 3, there's nothing there. What am I going to do? I'm going to make a new one with pixel 2.5. And it does this by analyzing the color and the shape of what's being played. So it'll try to fill it in with, with dummy colors and, and dummy images in these tiny little pixels. So to you, the human eye, it looks like a complete full picture. But that video is technically modified from here to here. It's just you want to notice it. And this idea actually carries over for, for many, many years. It's not just 1080p to 4K or 4K to 8K. Because yes, as you go up in resolution, as your video resolution is smaller, as you go up, so the next stage up would be uh, 8K, you would have the same theoretical science applied. It would you know use TV upscaling to fill in your 8K display. 
but it also works backwards, right? Because, well, back in time, rather, when you had the, the days of DVD, right? They, they weren't the best resolution around. And the next jump up in major technology was 720p. Well, it's the same concept. When 720p came up, well, it was a much higher resolution, you know? So what's it going to do? It needs to stretch the DVD video format, the picture, to fill in 720p content. TV upscaling is being used. So it's being used for, I would think, more than 20 years. You know, HD content has been out for a long time. And of course, the same concept from 720p to 1080, 1080 to 4K, 4K to 8K. If you want to get really, really narrow in scope, you can do, uh, technically you could argue, 1080p to 1440p. And well, you, it just, just could go on forever, but you get the idea. Um, this technology is still happening today uh, without even realizing it. So what I mean by that is, yeah, okay, we had DVDs back in the day. If you're much younger, you wouldn't know that or care. But if you watch content on a uh, cable digital box, uh, if it is 1080p, which it might not be, it might actually be 1080i. Okay, there's another video explaining. It's not actually 1080p, it might be 1080i interlaced. I'll put a link to that video uh, in the video description if you're curious as to why that is. Anyway, if you're watching 1080p digital video content, or if you're watching Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Amazon, like all these streaming services, they still have a bunch of 1080p content, but a lot of people watching on 4K displays. It's the same idea, even streaming services, even YouTube. You know, you have uh, a 1080p video watching on a 4K TV, same idea, all this always applies. So what does this look like? Um, now I'm actually gonna show you what it looks like. It's kind of easy for me to do in video editing magic. It's not really magic, it's super easy. Um, basically, this video is being recorded in 4K, 60 frames a second. Um, so it's a 4K video and how you play it is up to you. And even if you're watching this on a 1080p uh, display, I'm just editing the video. This is me doing it for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna pretend that everyone is watching this 4K video now on a 4K display, whatever it is. And what happens if you were to say, suddenly shrink this video down to 1080p, okay? It's no longer 4K, it's a 1080p video, but you don't have TV upscaling. What happens? It shrinks, kind of like how you're seeing it right now. It sucks, right? It's not that fun. Uh, you're probably squinting if you're on a cell phone device. So this is where 1080p, um, you know, really needs help to bounce up to 4K and so on and so forth. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about AI upscaling, okay? So we're gonna stick with the example of 4K just for simplicity here. Um, so we talked about regular upscaling. AI upscaling is basically, as kind of implies, it uses AI to make picture better. Is it really better though? This is where overhype comes into play, and then we'll talk about the success in the next section here in this video. Uh, so basically, you might have seen advertisements when purchasing a, a Blu-ray player, um, some sort of media player, uh, even smart TVs where they advertise AI upscaling or picture upscaling for better clarity picture and all that garbage. Because that's what most of the time it is. It's, it's pretty much garbage, just marketing mumbo jumbo um, that doesn't really work. So AI upscaling is basically like this. If you take the 720p example again, you take 720p and you project it into a 4K display. What will basically happen is we'll take this, use regular TV upscaling, put all those filler pixels, so the 720p will fill in an entire space of the 4K uh, display. Okay, but then AI upscaling is advertised to not only fit it in, you know, a, four, a 720p in 4K display, but also sharpen the picture ever so slightly so it looks better than it originally did at 720p. The problem is it doesn't always work that well. In fact, some manufacturers will even go a step further. What they'll do is say, we're gonna take, I'm just using 4K for this example now. We're gonna take your 4K original video and we're going to upscale it with AI technology and it's gonna look sharper and better. So your 4K video that you have playing on a 4K TV is gonna look better thanks to our technology. But is that really better? Not necessarily, no. Um, in my opinion, I've seen AI technology being advertised on some great media players, some great TVs, super expensive. Like you're talking almost like six, $7,000 Canadian, which I think comes out to like the four to $5,000 bracket in the US. Advertising AI picture upscaling technology, I can't even notice it. If someone told me it was using AI technology or not, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know the difference. In fact, in some cases I've seen where some devices make the picture look worse. I've seen some 1080p video 
being upscaled with AI technology on a 4K smart TV, and the picture looks a little bit grainier, makes it worse because the AI technology doesn't know what to do, right? And uh, in my particular example, in my experience, it works with the NVIDIA Shield. Now the NVIDIA Shield, uh, there's three different versions of it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I've reviewed all of them, but the one released particularly in 2019, I'll put a link to that video uh, review in the video description, that's the latest one from NVIDIA thus far. Um, again, I have reviewed it and it actually works rather successfully. There's a lot of feedback also on the internet. It's not just me, but on forums where people state, hey, you can actually see a slight difference. It looks better. And this is, you know, where it actually worked out well. NVIDIA actually captured some of their engineering magic, applied it into a media player, and this actually does apply. It was slightly better. Um, is it drastically better? No. But can you say it's better? Like if someone was standing there and say, yeah, it, it certainly looks slightly better. Yeah, it actually does do a decent job. That's because NVIDIA is, of course, into the um, graphic card market, but they're also heavily investing in AI technology and, well, 4K or rather AI upscaling is where they kind of succeeded. They got some magic there. So let's look at this diagram here. What you're basically seeing is um, a sample on NVIDIA's website. But again, I can attest to this because I have the NVIDIA Shield. Again, I've reviewed it. Um, you can actually see that the picture quality is slightly better on the AI upscaled version. And this is pretty much how it works in real life. And the actual NVIDIA media player, it will actually do that. Again, it's not a massive difference, but it is something there. And that's pretty much a conclusion to the end of this video. I hope you learned something new. It's technology that we take for granted, not this AI rubbish. I mean, of course, except for the NVIDIA's example, but general TV upscaling, just the basic technology itself is actually much more complex than we realize. We use it almost every day. We just don't realize it. We take it for advantage. And that's a wrap. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check out my website and social media links in the video description. Hit the like button. It does help. Subscribe. And thanks for watching.